I've been wanting to make this video for at least a year now. In many ways this is the most important video you can watch when owning a telescope, any kind of telescope. In order to observe many of the hundreds and even thousands of objects in the sky, first you have to find them. <laughs> Let's cover some of the best tips on how to easily find objects in the sky even with a manual Dobsonian, even with no computerized equipment. You just point it, find it. Under 30 seconds you can find most of the messier objects if you follow these simple tips. Now before we start, you will need to learn a couple of skills here. First and most important skill is to learn to observe without any equipment. What do I mean? There are many constellations in the sky, one of the most famous ones like 1520. You need to be able to find them in the sky without using any kind of equipment. Constellations such as Hercules, Andromeda, Auriga, Cygnus, constellations such as Aquarius, Sagittarius, Scorpio. You know, most of these you have already heard of, about them through astrology, bad stuff I know, but at least they have nice pictures. <laughs> So go outside, have a look around in the sky and try to find the constellations. Chances are, if you live in the middle of a huge city, you will not be able to do that. But you should be able to do that very easily in a Portal 6, Portal 5, Portal 4 sky. Ideally, you want a location such as this one. This is a really great observatory. Amazing, 360 degrees, maximum view, portal 4, not bad, huh? But if you don't have such a location, have a look, this is right outside of my apartment. This is also not a bad location, right outside of our apartment building. Lights everywhere, but you are observing the moon, open clusters, globular clusters, it's pretty good, convenient type of telescope that you will use does not play such a big role, but it's recommended to get the biggest aperture you can find, even under portal 6 skies, on the outskirts of a big city, still big aperture will mean your life will be easier. By the way, this idea that big aperture is not needed if you are portal 6 like here, lights everywhere, complete bollocks, bigger aperture will get you better resolution. And even in such a location, the image will be sharper, brighter, and all I have to do is increase magnification and it will brighten the sky and it will keep the global cluster glowing. We will resolve a lot more stars. So bigger aperture is always better, even at Portal 6. 12? No problem. If I had a 16 or 20, it would be even better. <laughs> now what happens if you're in the middle of the city and you cannot even see some of the stars? In that case, solutions such as GoTo, which can be very expensive unfortunately, can really be felt helpful. But if you are able to see the constellations, sorry to say, a GoTo is pretty much a waste of money. You are more than capable to find most of the stuff in the sky by using just a couple of techniques. And if you look at this guy who has a 20 inch, he doesn't have any kind of GoTo on his telescope, does he? What you also don't find on his telescope is this, an optical finder. An optical finder is just that. It allows you to look through it. There's crosshairs here. It's basically a small refracting telescope, like magnification 8, aperture 50 mm. And I really don't like it. Really don't like it. Unfortunately, they put it with every new telescope on any brand. And it's a real pity, it's a real pity. Have a look here, an example, why I don't like them. So the biggest problem with these optical finders is you have to really get here, observe this through, through this small hole, and I hope that you're going to see something. It's really bad for your neck, it's bad for your back, and you can't see crap with this small thing. To add insult to injury, this thing will fog very fast, there will be a lot of dew, you will not be able to see anything. I hate these things. Optical finders are really a no-no. This was actually in a drawer, I put it only to show it to you. There are other ways 
you have these right angle optical finders, but still, I don't like it. I have to come here and use this small piece of glass. So if we are not going to use the optical finder, what are we going to use? You will need to spend some money in order to turn your telescope into an object finding beast. Tip number one, have a look at this really nice equipment for $50 from AliExpress. It's a really, really nice thing. Yeah. I only use this one instead of my optical finder. Simply point it where you want to point it, the red dot, and in the eyepiece you will see what you want to see when you cannot use the laser. You will find something like this most likely in a shop dealing with airsoft, with guns, stuff like that. What I recommend here is a combo with a laser and a red dot. Also it has a green dot. For a simple reason, if you're not able to use the laser in your location, maybe it's illegal, maybe there are planes uh, outside, maybe you're on a star party, you can very easily just uh, turn on and off the red dot finder. So now you have this thing, how do you actually use it? Now, but my favorite way on how to find objects is using this small thing. See, it's even smaller and lighter than the optical finder. If I want to find something, I just turn the laser on, yeah. <laughs> In the night sky you will see it like a big lightsaber and it will point exactly to the space that you want to find. If for some reason you are not able to see the laser, you can always use the red dot finder. Once you are pointed in roughly that space of the sky, you just use a 30 mm 2 inch eyepiece and most likely you will be able to find that object you are looking for. If not, you can fine-tune the altitude with this uh, altitude meter. It's very accurate. You find out from Stellarium from how, far, how high the object right now is. You get that same number on the altitude meter and chances are you will point exactly at that spot once you use the 30 millimeter. Manually finding objects, in my view, is half the fun. You get to know the constellations, you get to know where these objects are, you get to find them. It's very quick. I can literally point this within a couple of seconds, roughly in the spot where the object should be, and most probably it will be there when I look through the eyepiece, even with the 12 inch. Have fun manually star hopping, enjoy the night sky, Always recommend a really nice book that you can check, find some targets before you go out there and basically be ready immediately when you go out, put the telescope out to observe what is in the night sky. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe, like, we'll be making a lot more videos in the future, probably from the field and I still have a review to make for the big 12 inch. First and foremost, you pick an object in the sky that you would like to observe. Every object in the sky has a location which is set in time and place. At any given time, there will be a couple of numbers which will tell you where that object is. The one that we are most interested in is altitude for this method of finding stuff. Once I have my altitude of the object, all I have to do is point the telescope in the right direction with this altimeter. You can buy this one from AliExpress for about 10 bucks. Now let's have a look how you use it in practice in the dark. So let's have a look of how we can find Orion. First we have a look at Stellarium that right now it's at 17 degrees and 18 minutes. So Orion, we can see it was 17.2 or something like that and all we have to do is move the scope up and down until we have 17.2, right? And then if you look in the eyepiece, most likely you will see Orion. And if you don't, all you have to do is just turn left or right and you will find it somewhere. Now if your telescope is on an even ground, when you turn left or right, you will not change the altitude. So this is an amazing helper for those faint targets where you're having difficulty finding them. But Orion with the laser, it's a matter of literally like five seconds. You just point the laser to Orion, you look in the eyepiece and it's right there. 
The best thing I like about this one, you don't have to do any calibration, you don't have to care about anything. You just put it on the telescope and immediately it will tell you the right altitude. You can also add something called setting circle, but that one needs to be aligned to the polar star and also I just don't find it necessary. Once I get my altitude right, all you have to do is just sweep left and right and usually the object will be right there. The last thing you will need is a good quality 2 inch eyepiece. Low power. It's also called finder eyepiece for a reason. <laughs> it allows you to have wide, nice views where you will be able to see the object. Once you're able to see the object, even if it will be very small, then you can center it in your field, swap the eyepiece for something bigger and enjoy it. No problem, like a boss. You will probably also need this small adapter to put it on the telescope because, as I mentioned, this is originally made for guns, not telescopes. <laughs> Another great tip I can give you is the application Stellarium. If you are able to do so, get the Pro version. Over there you can actually set your telescope, your eyepieces and you can get an exact view inside the application as the view that you will be getting in the telescope. This is useful for finding really, really faint stuff where you can use a technique called star hopping. It's just as it says on the box, you find a star, you find the next star and you hop from one star to another until you find the object. Again, I find this necessary only for extra, extra faint objects like magnitudes 10, 11, those which are really pushing the telescope to its limit. Most of the objects for the Messier catalog, I just find them in 30 seconds. Even if you have a go-to solution, it's useful to learn to manually find objects because technique can break down and if you are unable to find objects the old-fashioned way, you will be losing an entire night of observation. Over and out, if you like it, subscribe, put a like and talk to you next time. I have a really nice video comparing the zooms, two SV bony zooms with the Hyperion Bother Zoom, which are already sold, to be honest. That's it. Have a look, have some practice. Again, as I mentioned, this is one of the most important skills you can learn in the field of amateur astronomy, finding objects manually like a boss. <laughs>